Hey everyone, welcome back. Just getting set up here. Had my air conditioning going. Um, I'm not going to torture you by having that on constantly. Um, we are continuing the build. As you see this mess in front of me, we are continuing the build of the Space Battleship Yamato from Star Blazers 2199. This is the 2500 scale. Stupid planes interrupting me. Um, this is the 1500 scale version by Bandai. And today, this I am continuing my somewhat complicated build of this thing. So, as you saw last time, this is nice full color instructions. Well, for the most part, um, most of this is black and white, but it does have a nice full color page in the middle here of the colors and everything. And of course, everything's in Japanese. And so if you can't read Japanese, you're kind of out of luck. But um, I have decided that I want to add lights to this thing because it would be really cool, at least to me, to be able to have the light come out for the wave motion cannon or wave motion gun, whatever they call it, and uh, have the, the lights light up on the inside of the bridge and everything, just like in the show. So you can see there, you can see, I want to have those light up and everything, and they got, it comes with the clear parts and I've got them all pre-painted. So um, where are we now from last time? Last time you saw I had already gotten this thing kind of sort of started to be put together. I got this awesome proper color for uh, for painting this thing to get it the right color. Uh, Yamato Gray. Um, love it. It's really perfect. So, in between my last video and now, I've done quite a bit of playing around with lighting and wiring. Um, I have the wave motion cannon light. It's in there. So the wire's coming out here. Going through the little channels that I had uh, pre-drilled out so that I can put the deck on there and it won't affect, won't interfere with uh, any of the wires. I have tested it. It does light up really nice and bright white. Um, that's cool. I, uh, I don't think I'll show you how it looks until I'm a little bit more along with this. Um, so that's this part. This is done. Um, actually, I will show you the actual light. Because, now I bought this light kit from Madman Lighting. It comes with nice instructions on, on everything. On everything you need. Now, that, of course, like I said last time, I've got the instructions on how to put all the lights together. There's no instructions on how to actually put the lights you know, on the kit. So you have to kind of do your own thinking and come up with your own ways. I've seen a few different videos on YouTube on guys building the kit. I've seen Madman has his own video showing you what it looks like when it's all assembled. Um, but not really, and there's a guy who has this kit and he adds a bunch of stuff to it. Um, but doesn't really, <laughs> he shows you adding all these different lights to different sections, and then it doesn't show you what it looks like in the end. And it's like, and he references his Facebook page, which, um, yeah. So maybe he's got it on his Facebook and I haven't looked at it. But anyway, so I want to show exactly what I'm doing and how I'm getting this all assembled. So we're on part two, and I've done quite a bit. So it's here we have showing you how to hook up the LEDs, uh, connecting the fiber optics to the end of the LEDs, all this good stuff, and now how to build the wave motion gun light. Um, so basically, I mean, if you buy this kit, you're going to read this, and you're going to see this is what he's telling me to do and everything like that. And then you come up at the end when it's done, your, your light. 
basically looks like that or something very similar right mine when it was all said and done I've got a little bit of fiber optic lighting just barely sticking out the end there um, doesn't matter mine works it looks good to me um, I have it just sitting right at the edge there I can pull this off it should be able there we go so it's right in there and it goes all the way through under here just barely sticking out it's right there at the tip you see the bulb for the LED and that's that and that is my wave motion cannon now in testing I noticed where this connects right there right here you can actually see some light escaping through that crack so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do to cure that because it is a flush fit it's not like there's a cavity and the two pieces are coming together I don't know how I'm doing a stripe with my fingers but um, it's not like I could you know maybe I don't know, take a piece of black tape or something and put it across there, have it hang over and have it slide in there because there's no actual hole. So I, I don't know what I'm gonna do to fix that. I might not even bother. The thing is gonna be sitting like this all the time and you're never gonna really see the underneath. And then again, maybe that's part of the charm in that there's light coming through the bottom because the wave motion gun is so powerful seen the show you see just how powerful that weapon is anyway so that's that that's the wave motion done it's done it's ready to go that's this part that's what I've done with that so far the other thing I've done is I did some work on the base how this thing is going to be sitting I didn't want this thing to be I didn't want to have to glue it to the base in order to have wiring run through it because as I think I showed you last time, how I'm going to be, uh, have the wiring come up through here, through the base and up through here, um, and then go uh, through a hole in the hull. I wasn't quite sure if I'm going to use the existing hole or not. Um, and then have the wiring go in there, and then I'm going to have all the wiring inside this section here, where my fingers are. Um, I'm going to put all the wiring, including the little circuit board and everything, all in there. I didn't want to have it permanently plugged in. And so I figured one thing I could do is use RC car battery connectors. I happen to have some old ones lying around. These are, what are these, XT, XT60. Now these are super way overkill connectors for what I need. As you can see the gauge on the wire is pretty big, right? These are for like LiPo battery packs in an RC car where if you don't know anything about RC then that means nothing to you. But RC cars, they've got these battery packs in them that are pretty powerful. And sometimes you need to use real thick gauge wiring to get the power that you need to the motor. Otherwise, you wind up melting all the wires. Anyway, um, my dad's been in that hobby for 40 years and basically has his own hobby store in, in, the, in the back part of the house. Anyway, so we have plenty of this kind of RC stuff. So I figured, you know what? If I mount this on there, I can actually have the ship sit down on here. If I put this end in the ship, and it connects and now it's plugged in and then if I want to move the ship I just pull it off and it disconnects and now I don't have to have it permanently tethered to the base and I did a bunch of Dremel work a whole bunch of Dremeling on this thing to get that to fit in there it's still not a hundred percent vertical I still have to do a little more work on there to get that a hundred percent we're at like 99 percent vertical on there so it's almost done, but not quite. So, that being said, that's on there. And that's going to go there. 
wire will just run down, run down this channel, and I already have a hole that I've drilled in the bottom there to run through, and I can, I'll just use epoxy to mount the actual plug-in for the battery. Now, moving on up, moving on up, yeah. Um, I've determined where on this base the ship is going to sit. And that's going to be right here, is where this plug is. And I put just put tape on there to remind myself it's going to sit right like that. Basically, this line here is going to match up with this line here, right? And that's basically it, and that's perfect. That gives me an, like an equal like 8.25 inches or something like that, sticking out each side when the full length of the ship is there. I kind of had it all put together kind of temporarily. To sit. So this hole will not be used, so I will have the actual launch pad, whatever thing you call it there, that will be intact and functional um, because the hole for the plug-in is going to go right here. It's going to be right there. I just haven't drilled it yet, um, but it's going to go there. So I determined that and then I've kind of just put that aside. Now I'm good with that. I know where that's going. I know what I'm doing with that. So, put that aside and we move on to what else I've done. What else I did was I made the mistake of trying to hook up LED lights directly to 12 volt power. <laughs> that was a mistake because I had no way of testing if the if my wiring was correct um, other than hooking them up to power and so I hooked them up and they would go light up gone they go on off and that was it uh, which made me think what the heck have I done I tried you know I've got my 12 volt battery pack and nope they would light up and go out I uh, try with a 9 volt I tried a couple of different things and then I determined I should not have been hooking them up to direct 12 volt power at all. I realized, well, maybe it, the whole kit is designed for 12 volt power, but the LEDs aren't actually rated for 12 volts. Maybe this little circuit board um, reduces the voltage or something. I don't know. I didn't make it, and the instructions don't say. So I actually sent an email off to uh, Madman Lighting and ask them about it and they said if you're gonna hook it up direct you need to put a diode in between yeah that's uh, so I burned out three LEDs and I was like crap I'm not gonna have enough white LEDs now so I went on Amazon and I bought some LEDs uh, nice and cheap I got a hundred and twenty uh, three millimeter LEDs so they're really tiny but they're, they're good enough that's just to, to light up little things that's all I need. There's one right there, so there's an idea of how big they are. There's tiny little guys like that. And yeah, so I learned my lesson. Don't hook them up directly to 12 volt. Um, so I also have, thanks to multiple RC stuff, these little plugins. Because the pins on this thing. They reminded me of, um, let's see if I can hold this up for you. They reminded me of the pins you see on your motherboard to plug in your, all the things on your tower. If you've ever put a computer together, um, it's the same kind of pins. They're all like two pin and close together. Now, the kit says, you know, use the wire wrap tool. That's this thing here. Use this to put the wires on and you don't have to solder them and I thought well I'm doing a lot of you know plug and unplug test this test that see how it looks that kind of thing um, I'd like to be able to plug it in unplug it try this plug it in that see does this work no yes that kind of thing um, and I know we had a lot of these little plugins and stuff because these things come from like the transmitter receivers and stuff in RC cars and helicopters and planes and whatever. Anyway, so again, 
just lying around, um, used ones that uh, haven't been used in ages, so I kind of borrowed them, borrowed them from my dad, and these work perfect. This is just a little two pin connector, and I can just plug that in on the circuit board after wiring it together to the LED, and it works perfect. So I can just wire it up temporarily, plug it in, test, does it work? Yep, good, or no, it doesn't, whatever. So, now, where was I? Ooh, I've got a metal rod on the floor I don't want to step on. Okay, where was I? Talking about the connectors for my circuit board. So these little two pin connectors, I'll show you on this camera here, um, these are just perfect, absolutely perfect for wiring this up and then I can plug them into the, cir to the circuit board and I don't have to worry about it being a permanent connection. So what else did I do? I got my engine lights done. So remember, I think last time, we have the engine that's going on the back here, like this. Now let's go. Like that. It's going to go on there. Okay. And in there, as you can just kind of see there, got that perfect. There's that little halo that's going to light up. So, what the instructions have me do for the lights is basically take two LEDs. Take a, a red one and a yellow one and you wire them in series so that's basically take a wire put it on the positive one run it to the negative of the other okay and that connects the two together and then you've got the negative and the positive that are going to go to the power source and that's how you run them in series so <clears throat> have you do that put them together heat shrink them together and hold them to hold them together like that and then put them in um, <clears throat> to into this little section here okay because this just pops out uh, like this and you got the big gaping hole there so that's all that is so this clear part here is basically where the lights going to come through now Bandai makes a little LED um, that will fit perfectly in there and then you've got an LED here right um, but of course we're not using those so in doing this so we've got two LEDs a, a red and a yellow and I found when I put this in like that what would show through there you could distinctly see the side that the red one was on and the side that the yellow one was on and they weren't really the colors weren't really blending so I was trying to think of ways, how am I going to get this to, to blend properly? So I happen to have some aluminum tape, um, also known as aircraft tape. Um, I figured let's put it all, line it up on the insides of this so that when the light comes on, I might get some reflective light in there on each side and then that yellow and the red won't be so distinct one side to the other right and I tried that didn't really work very well and then I thought well what about this piece exactly what for this clear piece what exactly is I actually seen through the hole here and it's really just this tiny little edge that is seen through there and that's it and there's nothing else you don't see anything else so I put aluminum foil on the inside of this. Let's see what I'm going to show you on here. Uh, there, you see that just on the inside of it. Because that's where the bulb is and that's where the light. So once the light hits that, it kind of, you know, it's going everywhere now. And it, it helps. Okay. Another thing that I've found. If I take the bulb and I go right inside there, it doesn't look as good. 
as if I backed the bulb out a little bit. So I made the decision to mount the bulb on this bulkhead. So I took, because I drilled out this whole hole, right, like that, um, and then <laughs> found out after doing all this, I don't need such a big hole there. Um, so I just took a piece of styrene. I've got a, I bought a pack of it. Um, it's like three different thicknesses. I took the thickest one and just cut a piece and just glued it in there. I found out, you can see my little black markings there where kind of the center is. Um, and I just drilled holes in the styrene, just hold, just big enough to hold the bulbs. And that's it. They won't actually poke all the way through. They're just sitting, as you know, the LED bulb has that little lip at the end. So that's where they're sitting right now, and they're just snug in there. They're not too tight, not too loose. They just sit there perfectly. And now, when this goes on there, which way does this go? Actually, this is actually upside down right now. It should be sitting like this. That's the way it is on the actual ship, um, which means this sits like this. Like that. So the bulbs are in there. You can see them sitting there, and they're not quite... They sit back far enough, and in testing, that lights up a nice orange color. Um, very nice, very bright. Um, looks just, it's darn near perfect. And so that's that. This took up a lot of time figuring that out, getting these. Now I have to wire another two LEDs together like that for the auxiliary engines. Those are a whole nother beast. I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, the ship has a secondary bridge down at the bottom of the hull. Um, that's this guy here. This guy hangs below, goes right underneath. Down, he's going to sit like that. Underneath the ship. Okay. There is an episode where they're underwater and they want it, they're trying to fool the Gamelons and making, thing, making them think they've sunk and are damaged, and they actually have the ship upside down under the water like this, sitting at the bottom of the ocean or something like that. And they go into this bridge. As you can see, I've got a wire coming out of there because one of the videos I was watching a guy doing the LEDs, he decided he's going to put an LED in here and have it light up. And it's like, you can actually do that? Um, I, that's kind of cool and so I decided to do the same thing and so I did one by one I drilled so you got my little LED sitting there one by one with these pieces I'm just pull this right out for you one by one with these pieces I started drilling right in the very very center right I'll get my face in there there you see I drilled the hole right in the middle there and then I just continued that hole with this piece and lined it up, and lined it up, so that's together now, and lined it up with this guy, as you can see, nice, I did a big hole in that one, because I was planning on putting the LED through there, but the LED, where did my LED go? This is actually, this is a, another yellow LED, I figured I'd go yellow down here, so this will sit right down in there, but it doesn't go all the way through. Again, it's just big enough, it doesn't, it sits on that lip. Okay, so, if I run these wires back through, if you want to cooperate with me, it doesn't want to cooperate, so I'll twist these two together. I don't really need these this long, but so this is going to sit there, and then this will go together on there, just like that. Now, what I did here with this top piece, I'll take this apart for you. I found in testing, um, I'll show you this in a minute here. So 
there was some customization required to actually allow light through here. This had a flat piece. This just had a flat piece going all the way across there that I completely dremeled out and got rid of. It was just like a little wall, right? That went all the way across here. So I dremeled that, that's gone. And then I put it together and turned the light on and it's so bright, you could see a perfect little bright light through the top here. So I've completely covered this with black electrician's tape, which blocks out the light perfectly. And then the other thing, the other problem was when this was on, like this, you could see the light through here, but you could see the distinctive single little freaking light bulb right in the middle. And I didn't like that. So I took, um, in similar fashion to what I did with the little auxiliary engines and put that little piece of white plastic from the McDonald's lid. Um, I, did, I took another part of the lid and cut it and put it like that in there. As you can see in the middle, I've kind of doubled up the plastic to filter that light out from the center. And now it looks a lot better. So it's basically, you just see this little rim of light through there. I want to show it to you. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to wire this up a little temporarily here and I'll show you. So I actually haven't tested it since I uh, did all that modification. I tested to make sure it worked, but that was it. So I'm going to wire this up. are so long on here. So just wrap that around there a couple times. Don't need much. Doesn't even have to be all that tight. Just needs to have good connection and make sure that there's no touchy touchy of positive and negative. thing I don't want is I don't want these touching with these. So let's just make sure that don't happen. Plug this in. Okay. Nothing touching, nothing touching. See, that wants to touch. See, just like that. Just sitting there. It wants to be a bad boy. So I'm just going to do this. Make sure. all good okay so that'll hold it in place now okay turn it on so you got the little uh, orange light that came on there now this has got light coming out of it you can see on the camera you can see my central light there but if I'm actually looking at this it's just kind of a glow uh, let's see how this camera picks it up yeah let's see what if I turn off my light uh, it's about the same you can see the glow there. Right? Just like that. And that's all I want. And there's no light. You can't see it through the top here anymore. That electrician's tape is doing its job fantastically. Although, there is a little bit of light seepage through the back. Which... I might be able to cure just by squeezing it a little tighter. That seems to, to do it. You can still see it in the dark, but that's okay. For what it is, it's fantastic. Plus it's going to be sitting like this. It's going to be at the bottom underneath. It's just a little detail that's 
kind of neat, right? And the fact that it's yellow, I like that. It's not just white, pure bright white light or anything like that. Shut that off. Unplug it. Perfect. And that's that. So that's that part. Okay. Turn my light back on here. Now I will unplug these. Well, plug, just undo this. I don't need these wires nearly as long as they are. I'm just keeping it like this until I'm ready. The end the end result of this wire is it's going to be maybe this long or something like that and that's it because I have to wire this one in conjunction with two other LEDs and I wire them in series so so yeah there's that so that's this guy that's that part that was my first real custom one now going back to this guy we have the little windows here on each side. Now I've already put the little green lenses in there because I need to hang or suspend an LED kind of in the middle here to light these up. So what I did is again I cut a piece of styrene and I wired up a little three millimeter white LED and I just I literally just put a hole through the styrene and then just went through on the other side with electrician's tape to hold it. And then this, there have, there's a ridge, I don't know if you can see it on the camera right now. On each side there's a ridge here and here. Okay. I think that's just, they've done that for structural integrity to make it rigid. Um, because it, it serves no other purpose, nothing gets put on there. So, that allows me to take this styrene, put it in there, and just kind of center it there and I can glue that down. I'll glue it down just right there. Put the LED right there and it'll light up enough in this little cavity that you can see the light through the green lenses. And that's all it needs. And so there's that. Um, and again, got this cut long enough because this little section here is where the circuit board's going to go and everything. So they only need to be that long, they just need to run there. One of these has to run up the, to the bridge, like this, to go to the LED that's going to go up to the bridge. Then it will come back down, go to this LED, and then from this LED up through to the circuit board. And there we have three LEDs in series, in three completely different parts of the ship. That about sums it up. That pretty much sums up what I've done in the last week. <laughs> pretty much. Um, a lot of testing. I mean, a lot of a lot of this is looking at it and going, hmm, how do I do this? What should I do? Maybe this will work. Let's try this. And I just kind of do it little bits and pieces. I don't spend a whole lot of time um, in one sitting working on this. I do a little bit here, watch some TV, do a little bit more, watch some YouTube. I just kind of do bits and pieces as I go and that's why I'm going to do these streams and these videos of this build much shorter than my normal videos and um, almost kind of doing recaps of what I've done because a lot of it is just thinking about how I'm going to go about doing this. Now as I briefly mentioned I've got one more LED that I'm going to put up through here for the bridge. Now of course like in similar fashion to the engine Bandai makes an LED that you can sit right in I think it goes right in here. It's kind of in the bottom of this piece as it goes there and then shines the light up right up through into the bridge. Um, but I'm not using one of those, so I need to just run an LED. I think I got one more that's wired up. I don't know. I 
think I have to wire one more up still. I haven't decided yet whether to just have the LED sitting down in here and this level, you know, maybe here somewhere, whatever, just to, it's just kind of poking up in there and then run the fiber optic cable up through or to actually have the LED sitting high. You know what I mean? Um, if I run the fiber optic, then I'll have to fray the ends like that. As you can see, I, I've permanently bent these to go into the um, auxiliary engines through that hole that I've drummeled out there. That's going to go like that in there. Like that. And then it will connect to those two. So, uh, so I'll show you. You know what I will do? I'm going to do that now. I'm going to wire up these LEDs for the auxiliary engines. I'm going to do that right now. Just what needs to be done. So this LED is yellow. Yellow LED. And a red LED. Red LED on the floor. my tweezers to pick it up. Okay. Yellow and a red. Now, the first thing I need to do, I have a little piece of red wire here somewhere. Or maybe I did and now it's on the floor. I had a very short section, for short piece. That I specifically. There it is. Okay, there it is there. <clears throat> so, this piece, I just have a short little section here because I need to change my glasses. That's not why. Okay, because I need to put, these are going to go right beside each other, like this. They're going to go doink, just like that. And so I only need a very short piece of wire. And what's kind of handy with the wire, with this guy, is it comes with a little wire stripper in the side of it. You just stick the wire through, and you kind of just slide it down and pull. Now I've just stripped the little section off of there. So this is how we use this. I actually, <laughs> I bought this thing and then I had to go on YouTube to find out how to use this thing. It's got two holes in the end here. One in the middle and one that's kind of up to one side. So you put the wire through on that one that's up on the side, like that. You can actually see it come out as it sticks to the top there. Okay, like that. See it sticking out there, a little white piece right there, a silver. Okay. Sounds like a motorcycle gang going on out there. Then we just take one of the rods of the LED. In this case, we're going to do the positive. The positive is a longer one. Okay, now it's hard to tell from the camera. You see one is definitely longer than the other. So we'll take that longer one and we're going to put that in the middle hole of this. I can find the hole. There it is. I'm going to slide this all the way down. Okay. Now I'm going to hold the wire on the LED like this and then all I do is twist. 
I don't have to put a lot of pressure. I'm not really pushing very much. All I'm doing is twisting it. I do that a few times and it finally comes loose. And now that wire is perfectly wrapped around that little rod. And it's tight, it doesn't go anywhere. Now, at the same time, I don't want to play with it too much because this single wire, strand wire does kind of, it's a little bit brittle. If you bend it too much, it will break. So now that that's done, I need to connect it to the negative on this one. So, first of all, stick this in the hole. Again, in the top hole that runs the wire out through the top there, just like that. Hold it there temporarily. I'm actually going to just bend that up so it's out of my way a little bit. Now, this one is going to go to the negative, so I'm going down to the shorter end of this one. Bring that down. Again, I'm just going to hold it with my finger and then just twist. And that's it. And that's all there is to it. And now these two are wired together. Now I'm going to bend this a little bit in the middle so that I can bring these two together easier. Just like that. Now these two are wired together. And they're going to be in series. Now what I'll do is I'll run a positive. I'll find which one is positive here. So I'm going to run positive to this one and negative out of this one. But in theoretically what I'm doing really is just running one is going to go to the plug, the other is going to go on to another LED. That's really what it's going to be like. So, I want to wire these up because I am going to heat shrink it, but once I heat, put heat shrink on here, it's going to be too tough to get at it to wire up. Unless I literally just line it up right at the edge, which is going to be too hard to do. But I do need a length of wire. So, and I want to have the length of wire about the same as this. I don't know what kind of motorbike game is going on out there, but holy crap. I have a feeling I could actually just use this wire if it's long enough. Basically, these wire lights are going to the same spot. Let me see here. It's going to go right there. So, I want this to be that long. So, if that's that long, it will be connecting to there. I think this will work. So, ah, I forgot about this. I need to run wire this in to that. Or do I? I need to refer my, to my instructions to see whether the engine lights are ran in series. I know this engine light is, and I know the auxiliary engine lights are, but I don't know whether they're run together or not. So it shows me how to make those, shows me how to make the engine lights here. And in the end, they want the engine light to look like that. But also, they show them with the fiber optic lights right there for the auxiliary engines. So let's see. Flickering engine output, connect the string of LEDs for both the main and auxiliary engines here to get the flickering engine effect. And they are run in series. So there is only one engine output. So on this board, we have the main power going in. The power goes in. We've got the wave motion cannon halo effect. Then the wave motion gun main output. Then we've got the engine output and constant LED output. And 
that's all there is. So the engines are going to go to the one plug. Okay, so that's going to change the way I wire these together. Because one of these needs to go to one of these. Since these are going to be close, what I'm going to do is pull this apart temporarily. Okay, and I'm going to take this out and put it in here. This is where it sits on the bottom half. Now these lights are going to sit basically like this with these coming off the tips. I want to get the heat shrink on there in such a way that this one strand will get light from both the red and the yellow. Right? So these are basically going to sit like this or like this, with these coming off, one going out this way, like this, and then the other one going out like this. So basically, in a crude way, these sit like that, with the LEDs pointing down means I really only need that much length but I'm going to do a little bit more so I'm going to cut it there so which one am I going to do which one's going to be short I guess see that also means I need to unwrap these so one's going to be really long and the other is going to be really short I think I'll do the negative as a short one. So I don't think it'll really make any difference which one is which. Probably more than I need. More than I need. So I'll do negative is short. Which means it's going to go on this light. So let's strip that. as a negative. This one. And we'll just do a little bit of a twist. Twisty, twisty. And that's done. Okay. Now, I don't need to leave these that long. As you can see with this these lights, 
they're nice and short, right? So they don't have these long prongs sticking out everywhere. So I will still keep the negative one shorter. So that if I do need to take them apart for whatever reason, I still know which is which. Okay, so now I need a wire to go on to this one, and that can be this wire here that we just you just cut off. And sometimes, you know, after being used so much, these wires get a little bit bent and they don't want to go into the hole. It becomes a little bit of a hassle. But just deal with it and that's fine. Hold it onto the bulb and twist. And that's done. And now that that's done and I'm holding it, I can do this. And those are now wired together. Now, if I've done everything right, I can plug these two wires in and they will all four light up if I've done everything right. Now, before I go any further, I do want to check to make sure that I've done everything right. It's the worst thing when it comes to doing any kind of electronic stuff is doing a whole bunch of work and then finding out after you've wired a whole bunch of stuff together that you've done something wrong. So, we are going to test these by lighting them up. Now, I'm not going to put them on the actual engine one because I'm not concerned about the engine flickering right now. Now, what's going to be kind of weird is which one's paused now. Which one's positive and which one's negative? I guess we will find out. Because they're running series. I don't know. I'm gonna wire this on this side. And we'll see. Seems kinda weird I'm running black to red and red to black, but I don't know. When it's run in series, I don't know if it makes any difference. Not touching, not touching, nothing touching there. Okay didn't turn on. So what happens if I do it the other way around? Red to red and black to black. Nothing touching, nothing touching. Still, so I've got something wired wrong.
something was wrong here. Okay. Positive to negative, over to positive, then to negative. Negative goes to positive, right? I'm doing it in series. That's how it should be, right? Positive, let's follow the positive. The positive goes to the positive, coming out of the negative over to the positive, which then comes out of the negative over to and there's a problem. That needs to come to a positive. So I got one right wrong. So let's disconnect from here. So we need to do a redo. We need a do over. Because I've gone from one negative. Positive goes to the positive, and negative. that negative goes to the positive, and then this negative needs to go to this positive, but I've gone to this negative. So I want to unwrap this. trying to determine if I got it right at all <laughs> as I silently think if I can I want to still keep this length if it hasn't been twisted too much might be okay. All right. So now, again, this is coming off the negative. So that needs to go to positive. Which is this other side. Okay, so that needs to go to positive. Hopefully I can still use this and it will still twist. I've had it actually break off when I tried to wrap it too many times. Oh, where are we going? We're going to positive. So we're going to this one. This one. I hope it will wrap and not just break off. Okay, we might be okay. Okay. Now this one, where'd you go? You gotta go to negative.
Okay. The other side, put a negative. All right. All right. Now, now that's negative, so that should be negative on here. Which makes this one positive on here. Okay, trying this again, nothing touching, nothing touching, <laughs> we're in business. Okay, so we have these all lighted, all wired together properly now, perfect. Okay. So let's take this out of the way. So now you've seen how to wire these up in series and how to use the tool. Now what I need to do, heat shrink these together. shortages they say it's good to have them kind of like that and then we take a piece of heat shrink I want to use a shorter piece that is a shorter piece shove them in like that Just like that. I've got a heat gun. I got a heat gun! So what I want to do is have this in there too. And have this one facing down. I'm basically going to be like this. that edge off a little bit. So one thing it recommends doing is heating up the tip of the um, of the fiber optic cable so they kind of become a little bit of a mushroom and nice and nice and clean and, and, and whatever and it helps transition the light through them better. And so you just heat it up until it just starts to melt just a tiny little bit. And then that's that. But at the same time, it kind of turns it into a little mushroom at the end. So now this is that's a little better. So let's do this one. Um, yeah, this. Okay, so these are going to go like that together. I'm tempted to just tape them so they stay like this while I'm doing everything. Maybe I am going to do that. I'm use a little, little piece of electrician's tape just to hold them together.
actually going to be like this. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I don't want it permanently spread apart like that. this sticking out of the holes into the holes kind of like that so that's how we're going to be that's how I want them. Kind of like that. There's no real way for me to permanently hold them. Um, this. So I kind of need to have it like that, hit it, blast it with the heat gun. Definitely going to be a challenge. Keeping it together while I do it. Do that. Can I spread them apart later? It's going to be tough. I want them. Because I need to be able to go to each side. Sometimes it seems like a lot of work for a little result. <laughs> okay. That's basically it. That. don't want one red and one yellow, which is why this has to be oriented a certain way on there. And that 
it's just like that. So maybe if I can just get that to sit there for a minute, I'll get my heat gun. in business. Okay, I want to do a test now to make sure that lights up right. Okay, again, our red is positive now. lights up, I will be very happy. If it doesn't light up, then I'm back to the drawing board. <laughs> not touching, hopefully not touching. All right, we're lit up. And it actually, we got kind of both colors going on here. I don't know how bright that top one is. I'll just cover this. You can see my two little ones down there. Looks pretty good. It should light up pretty nicely um, once I get them actually in those auxiliary engine pods. So there we go. Engines almost complete. All right, and with that, I'm going to end that here. So now that the engines are done, I can figure out exactly the length of wire I need for the actual plug-in and how that's all going to sit actually in the bay and all that once I've got the pods on. The pods. I'm going to call them nacelles, the, the auxiliary nacelles. Um, so again, I'm going to end this here and, um, lots more work to do still and, uh, maybe continue tomorrow, maybe on Monday. Monday is actually a holiday here in Canada. Um, so I'll probably stream on Monday and we'll do part three then. So once again, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part two a little bit. Um, we're getting there. It's slowly coming along, very slowly. Of course, if I hadn't been doing any lighting at all, this kit would be done. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. There's As far as complexity of the kit itself, it's very straightforward. Yes, there are tons of tiny little pieces for all the little anti-aircraft guns and things that go along on the sides of this thing. But other than that, these this kit has these big bulk pieces that just, you know, these are two halves and this is one big piece here and then are two halves, just huge pieces that is not complicated to build really at all um, until you get to the bridge and all the intricacies of everything that's involved along here. That's the only thing. Anyway, um, again, 
thanks for watching thanks for coming out and we'll see you all next time